Should we have a, uh, you know, cheeky erection? Slot. Oh, God, you scared the life out of me. Right, folks, hope everyone enjoyed yesterday's video. It's not quite as wet today. There's plenty more progress to make. So this is how we ended up yesterday. We've got the whole of the west wall done. We've got to take it all apart now and do exactly the same on the east side. It's good to see that other people were pleased to see Thor's mallet back in action. It's got a few names. It's uh, the Persuader, the Commander, Thumper, a little bit of Oak Sleeper has done us proud on pallet wood. That said, this one, which is actually a Thor hammer, or made by Thor at least, is um, three, I think three pound, I assume, uh, and it's a raw hide one, so it doesn't mark up quite so much, but it does mark the wood, but it's great with the chisels, just not quite have enough of a lump to get the beams to shift. That is the sole plate down in place now. We don't really need to move that again. It will be fixed down mechanically in the future, but now I can move across the components we don't need for any more of the layups. I will need the end posts to do our north and south elevations, but I'm thinking, should we have a, uh, you know, cheeky erection? That's as much as you're getting. Of course, when I come to raise the whole frame at the end of the week, I can tie it to these posts a little bit and we can support things and brace it all. But that's how we're looking. And remember the seven by seven beam is gonna be on top of these posts and then all of the roof build up will be on top of that. So it's not gonna to feel too much like a garden shed, hopefully. We will have some fun getting this up there, but more on that later in the week. For now, we need to put that to one side because we'll be working on the other side of that in a minute. But we also need to shift everything off the slab so we can start work on that lot. Right, so these bottom joints are in, 
they are pegged temporarily with our podgers uh, there's one more post which i hadn't done which is uh basically i'm standing in the middle of a doorway here 33 inch standard external door so i need to do a second post it's like a bonus one on this side but it would be a little bit overkill to use a seven by seven so it's gone for seven by four instead so we'll cut this one 10 on either end and then it should fit into these mortises here which are slightly smaller um just to account for the size of the timber there's still a little shoulder either end just so we can hide the mortise as the timber shrinks otherwise this mortise would show <laughs> What you're looking at now is basically this side door of the building which you'll be looking out that way so eventually this will actually be cut out this section here um this is the new timber i've just put in now if you were doing this build sensibly you probably use more like this sort of size timber down the middle so you, you could still do square face on the sides on the corners sorry probably six by six and then you'd have kind of four inch studs and you either put three down the side or you could probably if as this is a six meter building you, a lot of times when you see a garage here and three meter bays so you just have one post in the middle and you cut down your workload loads by doing that but we're not in it for the easy ride uh, and i think part of this well a big part of this is the aesthetics the joinery and the experience as much as just a structural type of thing um, there's far quicker ways to do that, but you will know that anyway. So I've got podgers in the two central ones. You can see down here I had some oak pegs. They're very, very tapered. They're very thin at one end, so they're easy to knock out. That just ensures that as I'm moving things around that those two aren't going to drop out because they're not very well supported on the saw horses. We get to start on this one. All of these are perfectly deep enough. Uh, the mortises are fine, so it should be a case of flipping it over and driving it home never that easy. You might have noticed that I couldn't find any matching gloves this morning. All right, we are ready for braces, just about. One thing to show here, this is what wouldn't happen if you were able to lay up properly. So if you lay up traditionally, you account for any discrepancies in the timber and by laying them out on top of each other and scribing down or using plumb lines down, you can account for variations like this and this timber here is the top beam and it crowns slightly up so ordinarily in construction you would allow for that and you would you kind of want that you want it to crown up and then naturally it will deflect slightly down that's basically what's happening here with all of our studs are identical lengths from the shoulder to shoulder of the um, the ends so we can see that five millimeters of crowning up is why there's a gap here so I'm not going to recut the post. One option is to leave it as it is, get it up, hope that gravity does a couple of mil, because you know there's a bit of deflection over six meters. Um, and of course, when we peg this, we will pull in a certain amount as well. I need to account for that when I offset my peg, but equally, we don't want to put that that peg under too much, I guess, tensile or shear strength, because it, we could either shear the peg or split the tenon. So. It's a bit annoying. Hopefully, like I say, when, when it's up, it'll come down slightly and we'll be able to pull it in tight. But that is something that you would avoid if you were doing this the proper way. Anyway, let's get on with these braces. So down this end, I've clamped this one just so that this remains tight. We can square this up and then we can scribe our tenons from our brace. And the way I'm doing that, which I didn't really show yesterday in the rain, is just lying it on because again, these are pre-cut, we pre cut them ahead of time. We've just gone for a 45 degree angle here. So providing these are square, then this will always fit. But again, if you're doing it traditionally, if these were much more irregular sort of natural curves, then you would not want to do it this way. Another good thing to use is big straps, ratchet straps, all of mine are in the camper van which is not here at the moment. So I need to uh, use whatever I've got just to hold this tight. And that's what those are doubled up from. Um, they were a friend's dad who um, had a workshop over in Wales and after he passed away, 
his tools had to find a new life. So thank you to Paul for those. Put a pencil mark either side of our tenon. Then I'll drop that down square um, onto the timbers and then we'll just mark up our inch and a half mortise on here and then we'll cut them. What I'm trying to do is miss out on a step or two because yesterday I took things apart too often. So I could have drilled these already, but basically I want to drill all my mortises before I put anything together. So once we've marked up, we've only really got to put it back together once. Finally, it stopped raining so I can get the camera out. Excuse the turkey in the background. Uh, let's mark this up top. And this is post seven. Right, while I work away on this, so I cover a few things which have come up in the comments lately. Um, one was the ear defenders that I saw yesterday. Let me go and get them. Quick one minute review. A lot of people asking about these. They are the Isotunes Link, I wanna say. Uh, they're the over ear version of their initial sort of in-ear ear defenders. They're Bluetooth and wireless and all that sort of stuff. Um, I can't remember how much it sent me back. There was a code. A lot of YouTubers have codes out for these things. iTunes did actually reach out to us a week or two ago and see if we wanted to try out their products, but I'd already spent the, my own money on them. So um, as far as honest reviews go, they're pretty decent. I would say uh, if you've got a fat, big, bald head like me, then this rubber band on top um, can leave a bit of a dent in your head for the evening. Um, so I might need to fabricate something soft and silky for my sensitive scalp but apart from that um they're pretty good they don't need to be super audio quality but they're good enough for me podcasts and uh, the radio and the music and whatever else i need to block out life with um main thing for us is just being able to receive or not <laughs> avoid a phone call when jane needs me in the house so she bought my first pair and then i bought these ones because number one thing which was wrong with the in-ear ones Apart from the fact they're slightly heavier on one side because of the controller, so I end up flicking my hair. Not hair, but, you know, flicking my head uh, all day. Um, I would lose them because they're dinky little things, whereas these are big and orange, like my head. Anyway, that is my amateur terrible review. All right, let's get back to it. So that is an inch and a half mortise to go in there. Again, it's still an absolute disgrace behind me, I'm afraid. I put the scaffolding up, already see that rendering, and then it turned to the North Pole for a week. So uh, I need to get back on that. I'm thinking Joe's bright idea was to get the frame up, and then there's bound to be a wait for cladding and flooring and whatever else I need to move on to next. So I'll do the rendering. Rendering at that point, until then, you'll just have to put up with the the mess behind me. After yesterday's decision making about putting those extra braces in, I was glad to hear that everyone, well at least the comments I read, seemed to agree with going for the two kind of bonus braces in the middle. So um, it was it was uh, well worth the hassle of taking it all apart again and putting those extras in. For this side too is plenty. My right, next thing to do is to work out is there anything else I need to do before I take it apart again. Um, we can mark up. I don't need to chisel in our numbers yet. I can do that in a minute. Um, that is a really wide doorway, isn't it? If I cocked up there. 940, that's 37 inches, which I think I'm right in saying is a is an external door frame. It just looks fat because this will be cut out the block so the door lining will come all the way down to here for the sill. What I do need to do actually, that's a good point, I need to measure up the height of the door frame. I measure that one over there which is a standard external door frame and then I need to see if I need to carve out a little bit of the top beam to account for it. Anyway we'll come back to that. Let's get these mortises cut.
God, you scared the life out of me. <laughs> Zooming out there. <laughs> Woo! I just do a little video. All right. What do you need to know? Lovely Patreons. Thought you'd let them know I let maybe what's coming up in tonight's video if we get it edited in time. And a little bit tight. As far as efficiency goes, I haven't quite mastered it yet with timber framing. I was thinking about getting a trolley or making a trolley to take the tools around, but then if you've got to get over beams, it's like hurdles. It's like steeplechase. I'm trying to keep everything off the frame, he says, but all the sharp stuff, because I don't really want to drop anything onto the concrete. Oh, I love that sound. Sharp chisel on the side of a mortise. Crunch. It's also nice when the mortise, these framing chisels are registered to be exactly, well, in this case, an inch and a half. So you know if your mortise is snug to that and your tenons are cut right, it's a jigsaw piece. Oh, I know it would go, but it's just a little bit too wet weather tonight and that ain't gonna fit tomorrow. I'm just gonna take a little shave. Remember when we cut these tenons, we had blunt chisels. Life has changed since that pro edge arrived. Slot. That's pretty damn spot on. That's pretty good. What I'm gonna do actually before I fit these braces is I'm just gonna square off the end. You can see at the moment it slopes in at a point I kind of want a nice angle so there's a bit of a more like a corbel, corbel. Anyway, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> what do I want the bandsaw before I fit them? Um, another thing that came up in the comments a few times over the past few videos is there's another channel called uh, Scott Brown Woodwork, Scott Brown Carpentry or Woodwork? Um, carpentry, I think. He's a carpenter in New Zealand. And I hadn't, I have to admit, I don't get to watch too many YouTube videos nowadays. Um, but I have seen one of his videos someone sent me or tagged me on Instagram, which was the, I think it was the Mafel big saw that someone had brought to him or something like that. Anyway, supposedly he uses a lot of, um, I don't know, even know the genre, beats, hip hop beats, I don't know, uh, in his uh, videos. So uh, no, there was no intention to copy the style. I, I thought I was going to get more people saying I was trying to be Casey Neistat or something, but Either way, it was just, we've just picked a few playlists. Um, more to keep us energized when we're doing all these edits each day and try something a bit different. But anyway, I have looked at a few of his videos, went down a rabbit hole last night and uh, it's a really good watch. It's kind of day-to-day uh, -day life. His job as a carpenter, doing everything from finished carpentry to framing and things like that. So I'm sure he doesn't need me to tag him or put a link to him, but I will put a link down in the description. Um, yeah, one day I might, try and get back into watching videos but it's more about podcasts at the moment because I can't really watch and frame or watch and edit. Trying and watching something whilst editing is very counterproductive. I'm having a terrible time with cameras today. Either turn them off by accident or this one just keeps on getting corrupted. Anyway, Hopefully, you can see where we are now. We've got ready to go in with the braces. Everything is drilled up. So we'll blow that away, assemble, prick, drill, pack away. hoping to get to the point where I could take all this down so we had a clear blank canvas for tomorrow. But it shouldn't take long to just break all this apart. I've done all the matching up and everything that I need to do. Everything's now marked up, ready so we know what's what. We're gonna have to rethink uh, how we're gonna approach this door. It's not a massive amount um, shorter than a regular door, especially once you account for this coming out and the block work. So this, it's still kind of, six foot five or something and um, whatever that is 
Um, but either way, that's something to be decided. Everything else is fine. So tomorrow I'm going to make a start on the north side. The north side will consist of this post here, but on its other side, the one that was here. And then we're going to be making a window, like a long letterbox window that's going to sit uh, just above worktop height between the beam and the worktop with that outlook. Well, hopefully that wasn't too much of a deja vu from yesterday. I know it's a, like, a lot more of the same, but it's good to show you the whole process. Um, there are a lot of repeat procedures in anything, I guess. Um, so we've done the two big walls. The next bits are much quicker. So I'm hoping to do north and south tomorrow, which will leave Friday to get the whole thing up. I've got to do a little bit of thinking because my beams are, might get in the way of the ridge beam. So I think a bit like when you're putting a steel and RSJ, it, when you're doing a knock through in the house, you need to think about where that's going to go before you take the wall down and put all the acros in. Because if I erect the east and the west walls first, I'll never, ever single-handedly be able to get the ridge beam into the middle ready to go up. So I need to think about that. One option is to leave it where it is at the side, erect the whole frame so we've got a level beam all the way around and then pull it up the outside onto the top and then I can slide it across really easily. Uh, I just need to think about how I'm going to do that. I don't have a block and tackle. I do have an electric winch that we use for the reef but that needs to be above pulling up. I don't really want to build a a crane, a timber crane uh, or an A-frame, even though that was tempting. I think it's fairly straightforward for me to get all the floor plates in. Then I'm going to slide the ridge beam over. So it's kind of sat running the length of the building. And then I can put up the east wall and the west wall. And as long as, no, that still won't work. I need a plate either end, uh, a beam either end to put it up onto. No, it will work. It'll be all right because I can bring it up on an angle and over. So I'm just going to go for the old uh, up a little bit, up a little bit, up a little bit. Whether that's on scaffolding or blocks to start with or the sawhorses. As soon as I get it to sort of waist high, then I think it's doable. I can just go up a... I can lift it, you know, <laughs> I'll be all right. But any brainwaves, if you've got any thoughts on how to do it, then uh, do stick and blow. I know you can do gin poles and A-frames and all sorts of things, but I think from a single piece, it's only one piece to get up there. I can assemble the whole frame, I think. Um, so anyway, I'll leave the physics to you. If anyone's got any bright ideas, stick them down below. Of course, in an ideal world, what you do is you do exactly what we've done here. You assemble all of the elevations, the frames, and then you get a lovely crane in for the day to lift everything in place. Now that makes sense if it's a, a house build, but it's not a house build. It's a glorified shed. And yes, it makes sense to have a crew of four or five mates here, you know, light a pizza oven, make an event of it. But it's uh, it's lockdown, so we'll find a way. Okay, end of another framing fun filled shame it's not friday that would have rhymed anyway we've got three posts remaining that is post six five and six either side of the window and our center post for this end they're all regular tenons so they should be plug and play if we got it all right um and i think we can get that done tomorrow which will leave friday our raising day <laughs> so i need those answers how the heck am i going to get that ridge beam up beforehand head back if you will need to look at the plans or maybe I'll try and put one up now so you can see what I'm on about. I reckon I can raise everything fairly straightforward. Apart from that ridge beam, I just need to work out best order to get it up. Anyway, before I go, I wanna say a special thank you to our patrons. Patreon is just an extra way you can support the channel. Of course, watching the videos, commenting, liking, subscribing is great. Um, Patreon is just like this extra little bit a little community that we've got behind the scenes who support the channel financially slightly um, and keep things going but also it's kind of somewhere where we can share a few ideas and behind the scenes stuff now we're not very good at that but we're trying to get better joe's going to take over from it we've got the extra little patreon only 
channel now and we're going to try and just keep things a little bit more regular there as well. Um, but the reason I bring it up is this weekend and yesterday I think we picked up a whole load of new patrons. So welcome to uh, those who have just joined us on there. If you want to find out more you can head over there. There's a simple tier system, you'll see the idea of it, the perks, um, and just by contributing a few pounds or a few dollars each month it helps keep all this going. It is the only part of all of this that is predictable as long as people don't just suddenly leave us um, because it is just a, a small siding, sideline sort of income for us to support the channel and support the time we're putting into it. YouTube is a fickle beast and there is no predicting what happens from one week to the next. It's not a stable income in any way nor is wedding photography right now. So um, it's been uh, nice to have that sort of little bit on the side, a little bit of regular reassurance, yeah, that it's coming in. Anyway, I'm gonna leave that there. If you wanna find out more, head down and uh, you can find out more in the description. But thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you tomorrow for more braining fun. Still not Friday, be Thursday. <laughs>